Hello, everybody. This is Henry Adams from Colorado State University. And today I wanted to give an introduction to merge trees and sublevel set persistent homology and the difference between them. So what I've drawn here in gray is a topographical map. So the gray curves are all lines of um, equal elevation. And um, we have you know, local minima and saddle points and and peaks in this map. So in black here, I've drawn the minima. So these are all the valleys in our, in our map. And the other points here are um, our local maxima. Okay. So what I've drawn in blue next is these um, um, transition paths that go through saddle points um, so these blue transition paths through saddle points would be the way to go from one local minimum, one valley, to another nearby valley, and while gaining elevation as little as possible. So to tra traverse from one local minimum to another, if you go along that path, that's a way to do it where you increase the elevation by as little as possible. The saddle points are these points right here. Um, where along such a path where you heat, hit the highest elevation along such a path. So many trails that you walk around on in the mountains will actually go over um, saddle points. Okay, let's assign elevations to our local minima. So some of our local minima have elevation zero, others have elevation one and two. I don't claim those elevations perfectly match the gray lines I've drawn on the map, but uh, uh, bear with me. And then let's also assign heights to the saddle points. So this saddle point has height five, meaning as I traverse from that local minimum to the nearby one, as I traverse along this trail, when I reach this saddle point, I'm at elevation five. And this saddle point has elevation six, this saddle point has elevation three, this saddle point has elevation seven, etc. We'll also assign heights in purple to the peaks. So here's a peak of height eight, and here's a peak of height six. All right, let's remove the gray contour lines now, simplify it a little bit. But remember that the black labels are the elevations of local minima, the blue labels are labels of elevations of saddle points along these transition paths. And the purple labels are the labels of peaks. So this peak has, uh, has height eight. The, you know, the purple labels are the elevations of the peaks. All right, so on this particular map, let's grow through and draw what is called the merge tree. As you sweep from left to right, the merged tree tracks a number of connected components if you were flooding the land with water. And as we flood the land with water, here in this particular example, we'll go from three to, um, I think maybe seven, you know, to fewer, down to three, down to two, down to one connected component as we flood the land with water. Let's do it more slowly. So, all right, we start filling this train with water and the lowest regions fill first. So these, um, these local minima of height zero fill first. And that's why I have these three connected components when I flood it up to elevation zero. Now let's flood up to elevation one and we have four new connected components that show up. And that's why when I slice my merge tree at elevation one, I intersect one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I intersect seven bits in the merge tree because I have seven connected components when I flooded up to elevation one. Okay, we'll next flood up to elevation two. One new connected component forms and I have two merging events, okay? So at elevation two, 
you can see here's the new connected component that formed. And here are those two merging events. So in total at elevation two, I'm now back down to um, six connected components. And when I, when I draw this vertical line, I intersect one, two, three, four, five, six bits of the merged tree. All right, elevation three. So let's flood to height three. What happens? We have a merge event and we have another merge event and we should have a third merge event right here. So we have three merge events um, um, illustrated by these three red dots right there. Okay, elevation four. We flood height four and we have one merge event, okay? Other things fill in. So this fills in to form a loop, this fills in to form a loop, but those aren't tracked in the merge tree. The merge tree is only tracking merge events. And we go to elevation height five, we should have our last merge event, and we do indeed have this merge event. Everything else that happens is not recovered in the merge tree. So at height five, we also have a new loop, another new loop, and I hope that's it. And then at elevation six, what happens? We have another loop, another loop, another loop. We have a loop that dies. We have a next, another loop that dies. And then height seven, we have a new loop along with loops that die. This one here fills in, it dies. This one dies, this one dies, this one dies. And finally, we get to elevation, so that was elevation height seven. Finally, we get to elevation eight and we have two more loops that die, but they're not measured in the merge tree. Okay, let me briefly do part of that merge tree again. In red, I'll draw the edges that matter for the merge tree. In blue up above are the edges that don't matter for the merge tree. So in our merge tree at elevation zero, we have these three connected components. And then at elevation one, we have four more connected components. Elevation two, we have one new connected component and um, two merge events, okay? And then elevation three, we have one, two, three merge events. Elevation four, we have a merge event, okay? This red arrow was a merge event. It was merging two connected components. But we also have new edges at elevation four that are not merging events, they're just creating loops. Okay, so that's why they're blue instead of red. The red edges are merge events and the blue edges are creating loops. And then at height five, we get our last merge event. So that's the end of the changes in the merge tree. Um, and at height five, we do get some loops, but they're not measured. Let me move now to the comparison with sublevel set persistent homology, okay? So everything that you can see right now, I've explained. I've explained how the merge tree looks in this example. Um, I've added this key saying that the black points correspond to local minima. The red edges contain saddle points that merge connected components. The blue edges contain saddle points that instead create loops. And then the purple saddle points are index two saddle points, maxima here in this example, that fill loops. You'll notice that the, the red edges form what's called the minimal spanning tree. So if you want to connect up all the minima in as cheap of a way as possible, 
and the price you have to pay for each edge is the number labeled on the edge, then the minimal spanning tree is the, the cheapest way to do that. For this example, the minimal spanning tree is drawn in red. Those are the edges that appear in the merge tree. Okay, so let me explain, oops, sorry about that. Let me explain sub-level set persistent homology by comparison. To get zero dimensional sub-level set persistent homology, it's almost like you go into the merge tree and cut it and then lay the edges flat. So imagine I went in here and I cut this right there and laid the remaining leaf flat. And I cut this and laid the remaining leaf flat. And then I cut here and here and laid these flat. And then finally, you know, I cut, oops, let me try that again. I cut here and laid that branch flat. And then I cut here to lay this branch flat. Okay. So the, the zero dimensional persistent homology contains strictly less information than the merge tree. But what's nice about it is that one dimensional persistent homology contains all the information of the blue edges and the purple index two saddle points that the merge tree totally ignored. Okay, so let's go through this step by step. Height zero, we have three connected components that appear. And that's why in the um, zero dimensional homology, three bars form. The zero dimensional persistent homology bars count the number of connected components. At height one, we have four new connected components that appear. Okay, so that's these four new guys. And in total right now, I have seven connected components. So that's why this, this gray line, vertical line that I've drawn intersects seven bars at height one. Okay, at height two, I have one new connected component corresponding to that bar that begins, zero dimensional bar. But I also have two merge events. And those two merge events correspond to these connected components dying. All right, height three, what happens? So at height three, I have three merge events. And so at height three, I have three uh, connected components that die. Height four, at height four, I have a merge event that's corresponding to this connected component that dies. But then I also have two loops that form, right? So when I add that edge, I get this loop. And similarly, when I add this edge, I get this loop, okay? So those two loops correspond to these two one-dimensional features in one-dimensional sub-level set persistent homology that are born at, at, at height four. Okay. So in summary, at height four, I had three new edges that appeared. One was red, which killed a zero-dimensional connected component. And two edges were in blue. They created one-dimensional holes. Let's go to height five. So at height five, I have a merge event. Okay, and then I have another hole that's formed and another hole that's formed. So that's why at height five, I have this one merge event and two new one dimensional bars that are formed. Height six, I have two holes that get filled in. That's these two holes right here. So those two one-dimensional bars die at height six because they got filled in. 
And I think I have three one-dimensional holes that also begin at height six, these three. All right, at height seven, there's a lot going on. I think there's two one-dimensional holes that fill in. Sorry, there's four one-dimensional holes that fill in. So one, two, three, and four one-dimensional holes fill in. That's corresponding to these four bars that die at height seven. And then also at elevation seven, there's a one new one-dimensional hole that begins right there. Last but not least, we are to elevation eight. And at elevation eight, the only thing that happens is two one-dimensional holes get filled in. And that's why these two one-dimensional bars die. So you'll notice that zero-dimensional sublevel self persistent homology tracks the connecting components when they're born and when they get connected or merged with other ones. Whereas one-dimensional persistent homology tracks when one-dimensional loops first appear and then when they get filled in. So in summary, whereas the merge tree only cared about local minima and this index one saddle points that merge connected components, drawn in red, um, one dimensional persistent homology furthermore shows you information about the index one saddles that don't merge things but instead create loops. And one dimensional sublevel set persistent homology also shows you information about index two saddles, the mountain peaks in this example, which fill one dimensional holes. All right, thanks so much for your time and attention. <laughs>